All right, we're going to look at solving trig equations now, and specifically we're going to look at solving first-degree trig equations. First-degree trig equations are equations that have trig functions in them, but not any powers of those trig functions higher than 1. So, for example, you might have an equation like 2 times sine of theta minus 3 equals 0, and we're going to look at solving equations like that by techniques I'm sure you've seen before isolating the variable. Now in this case though we're going to think of the variable as this trig function here. We're first going to try and isolate that and then go from there to try and find uh, values of theta angles. All along here what you need to think about is comparing it to all the equation solving you already know. So just think of this say as what would you do to solve this if it said instead of 2 sine theta minus 3 if it said 2, say, n minus 3, how would you solve that equation? Well, you'd likely use some ideas like adding 3 to both sides, or sometimes you think of just moving the 3 to the other side, and that kind of thing, right? And then dividing both sides by, by 2. So you need to bring all those equation-solving skills forward when you're working with these trig functions. And then just see that trig function just treat it like a single variable and isolate it. All right? All right, so first we'll tackle this equation here. Uh, 5 cos x minus 4 equals 0. Now, we need to solve it over this specified domain here, but where x can be values between 0 and 2 pi. So in other words, we're looking for angles in standard position that are within one full counterclockwise rotation. All right? So to go with solving this, First of all, if you do not already have the trig function involved in the equation isolated, that's a first step that you need to do. So let's do that. I would start by moving that 4 to the other side of that equal sign and making it 5 cos x equals 4. If 5 cos x minus 4 equals 0, 5 cos x equals 4. If I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get cos x equals 4 fifths. All right, four-fifths. Now we've isolated this trig function here. Now we can go about finding those values of x. Cosine is four-fifths. That means we're going to be looking in quadrant one and four because that's where cosine's positive. So to find that angle, we first have to find the reference angle. Reference angle we're going to use cosine inverse function of four-fifths. And that's going to give us what we can use to find both of those angles. Because one of the angles is this, it's going to be the reference angle itself, but the other angle is going to be all the way over there in quadrant four. We're going to have to use the reference angle to find it. All right, so that first one, first x value is just going to be the reference angle itself, right? Because it's in quadrant one. Second angle, though, is going to be 2 pi minus that reference angle that we're going to use to find it, right? Because it's all the way around minus the reference angle gets us back to that. All right, so let's get our calculator out and find that because this value right here is not one of those special triangles or something we can use the unit circle with. So we're going to have to resort to the calculator and make sure it's in radian mode, which it is and then find our reference angle cos inverse of four fifths. Gives us that, that's our reference angle. That's the first angle as well, right? Because we're in quadrant one. And then our second angle is gonna be two pi minus that value, that answer right there. So we have 0.64 and 5.64. All right, is our two answers. 0 0.64 and 5.64. There's your two solutions approximate to two decimal places for that equation. Let's look at a second one here. All right, so this one's going to require a little bit more isolation here. You have this equation here, 5 minus 2 sine theta is equal to 4 minus 3 sine theta. Just like any other equation, just treat this as your variable until you get it isolated and then worry about finding angles. Right, don't do anything else 
with the sine theta first, just treat it as something you're isolating here. I would start by gathering all these terms on the same side. I'd move that 3 sine theta to this side. I'll do it one step at a time here, even though maybe you can do several. Move that over, it's going to be plus 3 sine theta equals 4. And then I move that 5 to the other side. So I'm going to have negative 2 sine theta plus 3 sine theta equals 4 minus 5. So I can add these like terms together here. It's going to leave me with 1 sine theta, right? Negative 2 sine theta plus 3 sine theta. Just like if you had negative 2x plus 3x, you can make it 1x or just x. So I can do this here and say negative 2 sine theta plus 3 sine theta is just 1 sine theta or sine theta. And I got negative 1 on the other side. So now we've reduced the equation to this simpler equation. We can find those values of theta in that domain. Again, one full revolution there. If we're going to find these, this is a value that's actually easiest to use the unit circle since it's sine here. If you know your coordinates of your unit circle, one way to do it is just to imagine a circle on your set of axes in standard position. There we go. Now if that's a unit circle, the radius is 1. All of these points are, you think about the coordinates here, this is 1, 0, this is 0, 1, this is negative 1, 0, and this is 0, negative 1. Now you're looking for where sine is negative 1. In a unit circle, sine is the y-coordinate. So you're looking for where the y-coordinate is negative 1. Well, that's going to be right down here. Sine y-coordinate is negative 1. So that's one way you can solve that. That's the only place that sine is negative 1. That one spot down there. This angle all the way around to here. 270 degrees, or since we're using radians here, 3 pi over 2. You can just write that. Theta equals 3 pi over 2. All right? That's that one single solution. Now, if you were to not recognize that that's one that you can use a unit circle, you'd probably still be okay if you used your calculator. If you used your calculator, it's going to take longer, and you might not recognize it right away, but if you're finding that, and you're looking for the reference angle, which you'd do sine inverse of 1, and you'd get that, that's actually pi over 2. All right, and then if you said, well, sine is a negative number in quadrants 3 and 4, if you were looking for two angles and you said one's here and one's here, and you went pi plus pi over 2, it would actually take you to there, right? Because pi over 2 is, that is all the way to the axis there. And then if you went quadrant 4 was 2 pi minus pi over 2, you'd get the same thing. So even if you didn't recognize that you can use the unit circle there, calculator is eventually going to give you that same thing. Just going to take a little bit longer there, right? All right, let's try one more here. Cosecant m plus 2 equals 0, and we're looking at that same domain there, 0 to 2 pi, one full turn. We want to first try and isolate this trig function and then work with finding the angles after that. So if cosecant m plus 2 is 0, well, we can change that to cosecant m equals negative 2, right? Move that to the other side. Subtract 2 from both sides, whichever way you think about it, right? If you think about that, that's fine too, whatever you do. And then after that, I think it's easiest to change it into one of the primary three trig functions. I have an easier time thinking about those than those reciprocal ones. So I'm going to change this. If this says cosecant m is negative 2, I can change it to sine of m equals the reciprocal of negative 2, which is negative 1 over 2. All right, negative 1 over 2. And then we're going to solve that. Now, 1 over 2 is something you should recognize as one of those uh, special ratios. It comes from one of the two special triangles, a sine of 1 over 2. We should think about where we're looking here first, though, because we're looking at where sine is negative. All right, quadrants 3 and 4. When we draw this here, I'm going to draw it so that we have this ratio done correctly here, right? So I want the sine of this angle to be 1 over 2. So I'm going to draw it like this because the reference angle for that is going to be 
I'm going to draw that little reference triangle in there. And I'm going to draw it on this side too. And we're looking at this angle from there. And we're looking all the way over to here, that angle. All right. In the first triangle there, in both those triangles, the fact that it's 1 over 2, this is 1. That's negative 1. That's negative 1. Let me get rid of the angles temporarily here for a second. And our 2 is our hypotenuse here, right? And this reference angle is pi over 6, right? So we have reference angle for angle M is pi over 6. So our 2, this one is going to be pi plus pi over 6, right? Pi is like 6 pi over 6, right? So what you're thinking, you don't need to write it down. You can just say M is what it is. You can think the first M value is pi plus the reference angle, quadrant 3, or in other words, 6 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6, so 7 pi over 6. And then the other angle, angle 2 here, is all the way around minus the reference angle. Right, so that angle that we're looking for here is to there, but we go 2 pi minus, right? 2 pi minus that reference angle, right? Minus pi over 6. So I think you're thinking, uh, simplest way to think is 2 pi is like 12 pi over 6, minus 1 pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. So there's your two angles within one full turn. All right, so that's three different examples of solving some uh, first-degree trig equations. One here using exact values, special triangles. And one before that using a unit circle approach, or failing that using the calculator. And then one where we needed to use the calculator. There's no other way to do it. All right, that's it.